to do something I've never done before, and that is a movie review. <laughs> this is pretty much exclusively a book review channel because I read a lot. But I am also, I wouldn't call myself a movie buff by any means, but I definitely love watching movies. And I have for probably since high school is when I'd say I got like really into watching movies and like watching the Oscars and paying attention to stuff like that. So uh, it's more like just a hobby. I'm definitely not like, I'm not an expert. There's a lot of classics out there that I haven't seen, but I do really enjoy watching movies. And it's something that I do by myself a lot because my husband doesn't love it. <laughs> and also going to the movies these days is really expensive. So honestly, if there's a movie I want to see, I have just started to go alone <laughs> and see them by myself. And that's what I did yesterday. Um, AMC does Discounted Tuesdays. So I went to go see Long Legs all by myself and it was wild and I just am so excited to talk about it. So without further ado, this is my thoughts on Long Legs. Long Legs is directed by Osgood Oz Perkins, who is actually the son of Anthony Perkins. And if you don't know who that is, he was a, a very, he was a famous actor of uh, 60s, I think. 50s, 60s, 70s, mostly 60s, I believe. Even your most amateur movie buffs, such as myself, would probably recognize him as Norman Bates from Psycho. And me and my sister were so into that movie in high school and so obsessed with Anthony Perkins in high school that to this day, my contact photo on my sister's phone is Anthony Perkins. So when I when I learned that little tidbit of trivia, I just thought that was cool that this is his son directing the movie. And it stars Micah Monroe, who I have only ever seen her before in It Follows. And she was outstanding. Um, Alicia Witt plays her mother. Blair Underwood plays a, a special agent at the FBI. And Kiernan Shipka, who was excellent in this movie, she's in it for about two and a half minutes, but her character is very important and she nailed it. And then of course, the all-time great Nicolas Cage. This film was released on July 12th of 2024. Today it is currently the 17th, I saw it on the 16th. So I saw it like immediately after it came out. It currently has 87% on Rotten Tomatoes, which for a horror film is really impressive. Its runtime is an hour and 41 minutes, which is, Anything longer than that, I lose interest. I just, I want to bring back movies that are 90 minutes because like Banshees of Inshirin, um, Marriage Story, The Irishman, we're getting these like three, three and a half hour long movies and it just, I, no one wants to sit there for that long. Let's normalize 90 minute movies again, can we please? Like even my husband and I got to go see an advanced screening of Fly Me to the Moon, which was adorable. It was basically a rom-com two hours and 11 minutes. Since when are rom-coms over two hours? I'm just sick of it. And part of the reason I wanted to see this movie was because it was short. I was like, yeah, I can be in and out in two hours. <laughs> so love it. So before we get into anything about the movie, I just want to point out that people have been praising Neon for its marketing of this film. And I personally didn't see any marketing. I was looking for a movie to go see. I saw that it was a horror film that was short and I thought, good. But apparently the marketing for this movie was just like so well done. And so I just wanted to put that out there before we get started that uh, it wasn't necessarily a secret that Nicolas Cage was in this film because obviously his name is on every poster and every trailer, but he's never shown in any poster or any trailer. And that was very purposeful. Nothing is given away about the plot in any of the trailers or posters, which I love. I love going into movies blind um, sometimes. There are, there are times when I kind of want to know, but in this case, it's good to go in blind, I believe. It's also been marketed as like the scariest movie you'll ever see. So I just wanted to acknowledge that the marketing apparently for this film was out of this world. Moving on. So the plot for this film was super interesting. It takes place in the 90s, which it took me a while to figure that out. I thought that's weird that they have a picture of Bill Clinton on the wall. <sighs> because it takes place in the 90s. The, the plot itself is like nothing I've ever really seen before. Um, it's giving Zodiac a little bit because there's a serial killer on the loose who leaves behind notes written in code. And that's kind of where the Zodiac um, similarities ends there. But the, the plot of this was so, so cool because it's about a serial killer who murders families. And we know of his existence because at every crime scene, he leaves behind a, a little note in code and he signs it long legs. But the weird part about this and why they have been unable to catch this killer is because 
there is absolutely no evidence that he was even at the scene at all. There's no DNA, there's no forced entry, fingerprints, nothing. All of the actual crime scenes are murder suicides. It's usually the father who kills everybody in the family and then kills himself. But long legs, the serial killer is somehow responsible for this. And it's just wild, like he's never there. So how is he doing it? Because he, we know he's responsible somehow, but there's no evidence of him ever being there. So right away I thought, wow, what a cool plot. Like this is gonna be good. Lee Harker is Micah Monroe's character. She plays uh, a young FBI agent with kind of somewhat like psychic abilities. And she has a personal connection to the long legs case that I won't spoil. She's working on this um, case basically. The opening scene of this movie was so gut-wrenchingly terrifying that I was like, let's go. I was so excited. I'm like, I, this is going to be good. Again, I won't spoil anything, but it's about a minute and a half long and it is so scary. And then pff, long legs and then we get like the opening credits and <laughs> I'll be thinking about that opening scene for a while. Mm. The setting is also, I think, what makes this movie so spooky. It takes place in this, uh, the Pacific Northwest. I think, I think they say Oregon or maybe Washington, but it's always gloomy outside and it's usually raining. So that obviously adds to the spookiness of the film itself. So to me, this movie, this film is the best kind of horror film because it doesn't heavily rely on jump scares. It has a few, like what horror movie doesn't have like a jump scare here or there, but it doesn't rely on it, which to me is like just a cheap horror trope. I don't like it. Like shocking someone, yeah, that's one thing, but it's not like, I don't know, it just feels like a cop out to me when people rely on jump scares like really heavily to make their film scary. It's not overly gory. There are some parts where there's some blood, but it's not overly so. The reason this film is so good is because of how it makes you feel the whole time you're watching it. Like I felt uncomfortable, I felt uneasy, anxious, nervous, kind of just like filled with dread. And like I said, I went to this movie alone and I was sitting in my dream lounger and I just kept like, I couldn't like sit still cause I was just like uncomfortable watching it. But like in the best way, because that's when you know like it's a good horror movie, when you just feel like, not okay when you're watching it. Let's talk about cinematography real quick. Again, I'm not like a movie critic. I'm not a movie buff, but I noticed a lot of the shots in this film seemed very purposeful, obviously. Oz Perkins seems like he likes to center a shot, kind of like I am now, where the, the main, the, the focus of the shot is in the center of your screen. And, which is not super common these days. A lot of people like to get artsy with how their shots are put together, but Oz Perkins likes to just put the, the subject in the center which I kind of liked. And then there's times too in the film that, again, makes you feel uneasy because you're watching this character doing something, but you're also kind of subconsciously paying attention to whatever's going on in the background because something might be there. Like if you've already seen the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. The scene where somebody breaks into Micah's home, sorry, uh, just, um, Agent Harker's home, and she's sitting at her desk holding a piece of mail and she's opening this mail and in the in, behind her is a door frame. And if you're like me, during that entire scene, I'm staring at the door frame, waiting for long legs to walk by or waiting for something to happen. And there are so many instances of that in this film where you're just on the edge of your seat kind of waiting for something. And oh, I, like that, that is great, great directing. Not that I, like, like I said, not that I'm an expert, but that you can make someone feel uneasy just by having background space there, Ooh, was, uh. let's talk about performances. Micah Monroe does such a good job of being weird. Um, kind of socially awkward, really quiet, like just the way she like delivers her lines, the way she speaks, the way her mannerisms are, she just does a really good job of herself being like kind of off and kind of unsettling and kind of creepy. Nicolas Cage, deserves an Oscar for this film and I will die on that hill. He plays long legs and he is unrecognizable. If you haven't seen the film yet, don't Google it because it is so shocking when you see him for the first time. I watched an interview with um, Micah Monroe and she said the first time she ever saw Nick Cage in makeup was when they were filming a scene. So when she opens this door and sees long legs, her reaction is real because Nicolas Cage is so 
so scary looking in this film. And everything about him, like you, if you didn't know that was Nick Cage, you would not recognize him. Um, his voice is different. I mean, there was maybe one brief second where he kind of does this, like looks up and I'm like, that's Nicolas Cage. But other than that, the prosthetics are like wild. He looks nothing like himself. And he is terrifying in this film, like clearly unwell clearly unhinged like there's a scene where he's he's driving home from a store and he just starts screaming and this sh this like take the shot goes on for like what i would consider like an uncomfortably long amount of time and it's just it just gives you the chills like ugh. but he is so amazing in this film at being scary and being creepy and making you feel full of just like dread <laughs> Now, I know this is not a controversial opinion or even a new opinion, but um, I really wish there was a, a horror genre at the Academy Award. Um, it's no secret that the Academy hates horror movies. They're rarely nominated for anything. One huge exception probably being Parasite in 2020. If you haven't seen Parasite, I saw that film in theaters, which is like one of my biggest like um, flexes. It's like, oh yeah, I saw Parasite in theaters, whatever. Oh, it's so good. And it won, it won, movie of the year or like one movie of the year which is wild for two reasons one it's a korean film so it's it's not in english and two it's a horror film those things never happen other than that one big exception horror movies don't get any attention from the academy and it's really a huge bummer for example like tony collette at the very least deserved a nomination for her performance in hereditary and that's like almost universally agreed upon by everybody that she was phenomenal in that film, but because it's a horror movie, that whole cast was overlooked for anything. And there's been so many good, insanely well done horror films in the past like 20 years. The Witch, um, Hereditary, The Babadook, Parasite, It Follows, The Invitation. Like I could go on and on and on and on about films that are considered horror or maybe even thriller, but get overlooked at the Oscars. And it's not fair. It's really not fair. They're horror, but they're not cheesy horror. It's not another Annabelle movie. It's not The Nun. It's not Paranormal Activity. They're not corny. They're not cheesy. They are well done, suspenseful, dark, scary movies. And the Academy just doesn't care. And it's very frustrating. I do have a few very minor issues with this film and none of it has to do with how it was made. It's more about the plot. One of them being, I just feel like Longleg's backstory is pretty weak. I'm gonna spoil just a tiny bit, so if you haven't seen it, just don't watch the rest of this this video. Who is he? Why is he a Satan worshiper? Why is he doing this? Um, what's with all the dolls? There's also lots of snake imagery that seems like it's just kind of thrown in there because snakes are satanic. And um, where does the name Long Legs even come from? I think maybe the ambiguity is on purpose because it's up for interpretation, but sometimes I felt like the plot was just missing a few pieces of information. Other than that, insanely good film. If you have time to go see it, go see it.